You know, I got thinking, and some of the preps I do are because of experience. You know, things that have went wrong and I don't want to happen again. And I think uh, a good example of that for many people would be when you couldn't find 22 ammo on the shelves. Or if you did, they allowed you just one little packet of it. And so people were frantically looking for it. Well, now you can find 22 ammo just about anywhere. But if you're like my husband, it seems like he still keeps grabbing it and hoarding it away just in case it would happen again. So he just doesn't want to be out of 22 ammo. And so he has learned to have a good supply. And I think a lot of us learn by experience that way. And I thought I'd give you some of the examples of things I've learned for prepping. Now, one of them is when I go to the gun range, do not wear a V top. Mm -hmm. Because <clears throat> one of the times when I was kind of a newbie going there and uh, yeah, I don't know if I don't have a good enough arm reach or what, but the lead seems to come, you know, hit me, casing I should say, hits me. I, I sometimes have like little black spots, whatever. Well, one of them went right down here and I mean, it's hot, it's caught in my bra. So I quickly turned around, whoosh, up my top, got up my bra and lost the bullet. Now, my husband thought that was really, really, amazing he thought it was hilarious and luckily by turning my back none of the other guys at the range saw it but i learned do not use a v-neck at the range okay imagine beautiful day you decide to go for a walk it's only going to be a three mile walk round trip from the house so you've gotten about a mile and a half you turned around and all of a sudden you know something dripping and you have a gusher of a bloody nose now let me state that I just sometimes get bloody noses my whole life, don't know why. But here I am cupping it and I have nothing on me to really stop it unless I want to use my t-shirt. And I'm like this, bent over, right, waiting for it to stop, using some leaves along the way trying to stop it. <laughs> it was pretty embarrassing. And then I'm walking home and it stopped and I kind of have my hand up like this because I don't want anyone that goes by to see this bloody mess. They probably think I'd been in an accident or something. So what did I learn? Always have some Kleenex with me. Even if I'm just going on a short walk, in case of a bloody nose or even a runny nose, Kleenex, good to have. Now some of the preps I'm gonna mention are because of travel, either by car or by plane. And by car, um, I remember once, and this was before we had cell phones that generally are with us all the time, I had my youngest son, he was only five. We went to see my girlfriend, did some crafts. It's 11.30 at night, I'm coming home. I'm about halfway between her house and ours when I realized, oh gosh, I'm on empty. And I left my purse at her house. So, do I go back and run out along the way or do I keep going and try to make it home? I decided to keep going and I ran out of gas. Okay, so it's almost midnight, it's snowing, I have a five-year-old with me, and we have to leave the car and start walking down the highway. Well, believe it or not, within a minute, we haven't even gotten to an exit ramp, a woman and her young daughter stopped, picked us up, took us and uh, home, wouldn't accept any money from it, and was so, so gracious. But what if the wrong person would have picked us up? Or nobody picked us up at all so that's when i came up with my keychain here right i have a video on it but if you open this up you have and it's really packed in here okay it's two twenty dollar bills so i have forty dollars always with me if i have my car because i can't drive my car without my keys so, I learned just in case, of course I try to keep it always half full, but just in case something would happen, I always have $40 with me. Okay, now imagine you're going on a trip with your whole family to Hawaii. Pretty exciting, right? To be honest, not one of my favorite places after being there. Um, it was beautiful in a sanitized sort of way, but anyway, that's not the point. 
getting ready, right? We aren't leaving till like three o'clock in the afternoon. So in the morning, I'm gonna finish up, wash, and then pack. And what happens? We lose power. So here I am with all these wet clothes, unable to put them in the dryer. I couldn't hang them outside because they wouldn't dry in time. Now, luckily, my husband put everything in the car, ran quite a ways away where they did have power, dried the clothes, came back, and we packed everything and made the plane on time. But I learned, don't do your wash the day you're leaving. Make sure everything is dry and mostly packed the day before. Now, this one's gonna sound a little strange, but always unplug your toaster before you leave for a weekend or on vacation. We were gone for a long weekend, and my oldest son was stopping back to uh, feed the cats and noticed there was heat. There was actually fire coming from my toaster above, and my microwave is above it, and it melted part of the controls for the microwave. And I mean, the microwave was fried. And for some reason, the toaster was stopped in the down position, even though nothing was in it. So we could have had a terrible house fire because of our toaster. So now we always unplug our toaster. Okay, this one's good. This one's gonna sound really strange. But I'm at the airport, I'm going to a conference. I look down as I'm going through the security and I realize I have two black shoes, but they're two different black shoes. They are not a pair. Oh my God, I've gotta wear them all week. People are gonna look at my feet and go, what is wrong with that lady? So I hurry up and call my son he comes all the way, it's in the winter, to the airport. I have it arranged with security that I can quickly go through, get the shoes in time, actually make my flight. Unfortunately though for my son, he hits a mailbox on the way home with his car because it was slippery out, so he'll never let me forget it. But now, I always look down and check my shoes before I go on any trip. Okay, this is gonna sound like the bad parents of the year, but when the kids were young, we had them all together in our van and we were going out to Yellowstone. And it's a wonderful, wonderful road trip. Yellowstone is one of the favorite places in Montana for my kids ever. But, you know, you're going, going, going in the car. You stop at the gas station, right? Uh, some people have to run in and use the restroom. Some people are getting snacks. We actually get gas. Anyway, we all get back in the car. We get going. We go for about 30 minutes when my daughter all of a sudden says, hey, where's Kevin? And Kevin had been sleeping in the car when we stopped. We look, he's not in the car. He must have gotten out at the gas station. Now we're panicking, right? Because we didn't have cell phones back then. So turn around another half hour. So it's been an hour, right? We get back at the gas station, and there's my son sitting on the counter, eating a candy bar, talking to the people there, having a great old time, and the guy goes, oh, don't worry, this happens quite often. Well, it certainly felt like a home alone moment. So now, if we stop somewhere, and I've got the grandkids, I count, make sure I have all the right kids in my car before I leave. Okay, again, this is gonna sound like a senior moment, but it wasn't. This happened probably, oh, let's see, maybe 15 years ago. It was the first time my oldest son and I had uh, been out of North America and we went to Borneo. And uh, it's a very, very long flight because from Michigan, we fly to LA and then for LA, we had to go to Japan before we actually went to um, Malaysia. So long, long flight. But I had read, you want to stay up until normal sleeping times, no matter what, how tired you are. Otherwise, it can really disrupt your sleeping cycles and everything. So we get at the hotel, and that bed looks so, it was calling my name. But I said, no, no, let's change, brush our teeth, and we're going to go out and see some of the city. So we were at Kuala Lumpur. We went out. We... Uh, actually took public transport, went to see a museum, some other sites. Coming back, I'm really tired, and we get on the bus that was going to take us to the downtown area, and I realize I can't remember the name of the hotel where we're staying. 
Now think about that. You're in a strange city. Many, many people don't even speak your language. And you can't remember the hotel that you're booked at. Well, luckily I talked to somebody and he told me the names of the major uh, tourist hotels and one of them clicked and I said, gosh, I think that's it. We got off there and it was the right hotel. But from then on, when I'm in a city, I write down the name, address and phone number of the hotel and put it in my pocket before I go anywhere, just in case. So now I'd love to hear from you. You know, what's happened to you that you now prepare for so it won't happen again? You know, some of those little things. Please comment below, list them out, and I encourage everyone to read everyone else's comments so we can learn from each other. As always, thank you so much for listening to this video and for subscribing to my channel. As always, please subscribe, share the knowledge, and thumbs up if you like this video.